What's going on guys? Frank here and today I want to talk about something that has been coming up over the past I don't know maybe forever. RNG and how it relates to games like Hearthstone and how it relates to games like Magic and why I don't really care as much as I should. Why I get more tilted when I lose the game of Magic than I do when I lose the game of Hearthstone. And if you would noticed, uh, if you follow me on Twitch at all, Twitch TV slash Frank Lepore, uh, you might have noticed that I've been playing a little more Hearthstone recently. And there's definitely reasons for these things. So one of the things that people complain about most about Hearthstone when I bring it up is the amount of RNG in the game, which is random number generator. That's what RNG stands for. So you're talking about mechanics and cards that are randomly generated that you don't really have control over. Like if I'm playing a spell like Lightning Bolt in Magic, I can target my opponent, deal him three. I can target your creature, deal it three. I have total control over this spell. Uh, in Hearthstone, there's definitely spells that do that. The majority of spells in Hearthstone do this. If you play a spell, you pick a target. You know, a card like Fireball. You know, aim it at your minion, it takes six. However, there are also cards like Arcane Missiles, uh, like Volcano recently, a new, newly printed card in Angoro. And these cards are pretty random in nature. Arcane Missiles deals three damage divided among three random targets. So it could be a minion, it could be yourself. And, you know, Volcano deals 15 damage divided among all minions. So it could kill some of your minions. It could barely miss some of your opponent's minions. So there's lots of consequences here. Uh, and things there's, there's room for things to go wrong. So it sucks when you're in the middle of a great game. You need to kill something. Uh, you have a card like Volcano or Arcane Missiles, and it just doesn't quite do it. One of the biggest offenders of uh, RNG is a card called Brawl, which is a warrior card, and it says, destroy all but one minion at random. So, you know, you, you cast Brawl, all the, all the minions start flying out, and then there's one minion left standing, and that's the, that's the, the one that remains alive. And you want it to be your minion, but a lot of times it's not. So if you have two minions and they have three minions, your, your opponent, 40% of the time, uh, one of your minions is gonna, gonna be the, the remaining minion, right? That's, that's, a, that's a reasonable amount, but when it's not, it's hard to plan around that, right? Like if your plan is kill all their guys, keep one of my guys alive, that's not how it's gonna end up. So that's, that's frustrating, definitely frustrating. And it's true, magic does not have as much of this in the competitive spear. Spear. Sphere. And that's true. That's 100% true. Magic does not have as much of this in the competitive sphere. But here's the other thing that I think benefits Hearthstone over Magic. When I sit down and play Magic, so I sit down, I play a game, usually about 15, 20 minutes. I sideboard. I play another game. Let's say I win or lose depending on the first, first game, and then it's tied up. I sideboard again. Another 15, 20 minutes. So now let's say match match takes about 50 minutes. I spent about 30, let's say we spent 37 minutes and I lose. It was a tight game. We played back and forth. That's frustrating because 37 minutes is a lot of time. That's not an insignificant amount of time. So you're talking about spending close to an hour on a match, devoting this much time to this match and then losing it. It's a, it's a much larger time commitment and, a, and even an emotional commitment over the course of four times as long as your average Hearthstone round. An average Hearthstone game takes about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes, seven to 12 minutes I would say is the average. So you're looking at being able to play four Hearthstone games, matches, rounds, whatever you wanna call them, in the same time span it takes to play one match of Magic. So it's almost, if you're going on a, uh, you know, an equivalent level, it's four times as much emotional investment in one round of Magic, which is why it's so much more disheartening to lose a round of Magic than it is to lose a round of Hearthstone, I would say. Um, this is completely different when you're playing an event like HCT, where you have three separate, four separate classes, uh, you know, one of the classes gets banned, and then you're battling with the remaining three classes, so it's more of a best two out of three situation, where you're able to switch decks in between. But on, you know, on a match-for-match -match basis, if I'm just grinding games on the ladder or playing, you know, on my stream, uh, it's much easier to not get completely tilted when you're when you're in a in a match of of these respective games, and one takes ten minutes and one takes forty minutes per match, and you know you end up losing. So the other thing I want to mention is that Hearthstone, while it does have RNG in specific cards, that can be mitigated. You can either build your deck with different cards, or you know you can you can actually just accept it as part of the fun of the game, part of the character of the game, where it's like hey. 
you know, some things are out of my control, and that's that's that. There's a, there's definitely enjoyment to be had from that. But the other part of that is, I think when people mention this, they overlook the fact that magic has mana screw and mana flood, for that matter. And this is something that's never going to happen in Hearthstone. Whether well, like while you do have the chance to draw your cards in the incorrect sequence, you know that's card games, right? Like you're accepting that uh, amount of luck when you sit down and shuffle, digitally shuffle or physically shuffle a deck of X number of cards. And that's just the game we're playing, right? So you have Hearthstone where you're always gonna get one mana every turn. On turn one, you're gonna have one mana. On turn two, you're gonna have two mana. Turn three, you're gonna have three mana. Unless you're playing Druid, of course, in which case on turn three, you're probably casting Ultimate Infestation. And usually that's just, that's great. That's fantastic. You never get that feeling of, boy, I didn't get to play any of these cards in my hand. And that's not true for Magic. I watched a ton of the HCT this past weekend, uh, which is the Hearthstone Championship Tour. And the matches were fantastic. They were back and forth. You could definitely tell the skilled players and how they were not only sequencing their plays, but navigating every single game they played. It was actually mind-blowing. And anyone who thinks Hearthstone is not a skill game... That, that needs to get out of here. That needs to get out of here right now. In fact, I actually retweeted something by Frodan today, who's a popular player and commentator for Hearthstone. And Frodan said, Pavel has won four out of the last five HCT tournaments and top aided the one he didn't win, WTF. And that's an amazing accomplishment. And as soon as you get to a place in your game where the same players are consistently able to not only top four, top eight these events, but just, just win them consistently, that's a mark of skill. And I think anyone who decries that Hearthstone does not have as much skill as a game like Magic or, you know, any other card game that I can't even really think of because Magic is really in a class by itself, uh, really needs to just rethink their position because they just might not be noticing the, the tiny incremental advantages that these players eke out. It's very easy to think that a game is simple or a game is not as complex when you cannot see the complexity. And I think that's a, a, a vital flaw that people are missing. The point that I was getting at before I got sidetracked by the, the by Pavel's victory and Ferdinand's tweet was that Magic has a thing called Mana Flood or Mana Screw, and we're all familiar with it. If you're watching my videos, I'm sure you're familiar with it. And it's basically... Magic not letting you play Magic. I turned on the Grand Prix DC stream today, and I and I caught one of the semifinal matches because my buddy Corey Baumeister was playing in the semifinals. So I was like, I need to see this. He just won a uh, Grand Prix recently. He top aided like two other Grand Prix, and he's on a, an absolute tear. Congrats to you, Corey. You were an awesome dude. You were one of the nicest guys. So I was like, I, I need to see this. I turned it on. It was game three, and Corey missed several land drops and missed one of the key colors that he needed to play his cards. And it was just not fun to watch. I'm sure it wasn't fun for Corey to lose that way. And I just basically turned on a stream to watch Magic and I didn't get to watch Magic. It's super weird. And this is how I feel every time I get mana screwed or mana flooded because you're watching the other person do things. You're watching the other person make plays, advance their board, uh, find themselves in a commanding position, and you're just able to literally do just that, watch. And it's frustrating. You know, and for all the RNG people think Hearthstone has, I would argue that the inability to play certain games of Magic when you sit down across someone in an attempt to play Magic, far superior. I will take RNG any day over going to an event and sitting down and not playing a game that I came to play. And that's just my opinion of the two games and the hindrances of each, be it RNG or Mana Flood and Mana Screw. Uh, obviously, I love them both. Magic is still my number one game, and Hearthstone is is really trailing up behind it. Elder Scrolls Legends is another one of my favorite games, and it's very, very similar to Hearthstone in certain ways. And uh, I think it improves upon it in some, but all three of them, great games. Yeah, I think, I think RNG in games like that is a little overstated. I also think the skill level is a little understated. So if we can just clear those up a little bit, if this video helps do that in any way, shape, or form, great. If not, just wanted to give you my two cents. Love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, smash those buttons, and I'll see you next time.